Welcome to APP 2015, I'm Miranda Deacon and joining me is Dr Martin Cross, Chair of Medicines Australia. Great to have you with us for Pharmacy News, Doctor. Now, how do members see the situation for pharmaceutical manufacturing in Australia? Um, I, I think it, it's a, a challenging situation given the reforms that have occurred. Um, there's two components, I think. If, if you're still manufacturing a branded product and selling that and, uh, uh, either in the country or externally, Obviously, the, the price remains relatively high because the price is high because you're recouping all the research and development costs. When it goes off pattern, though, and it becomes a commoditized product, obviously, with the reforms, the prices have gone very, very low now. And uh, um, a lot of manufacturing now, in order to be competitive, is the products are being manufactured overseas for many of the generic products in order to achieve the prices that the uh, pharmacists would like. Uh, but of course that then has the knock-on effect that it, every six months the prices go down further. Yes. So it's a little bit of a race to the bottom there. So I, I think it's, it, it's challenging in that regard. Um, I don't think the future lies in generic manufacturing in Australia. It, li it lies in branded manufacturing, uh, but there is a lot of opportunity there. But uh, a lot of the manufacturing decisions are made by the large overseas parent companies. And in order for Australia to be a, 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 a good location for manufacturing, uh, we need a little bit more, I think, stability and progression in the PBS itself because obviously there's been a lot of reforms over the last seven or eight years. Absolutely. Do you think Australia um, is doing enough to support originator manufacturers? Um, the, 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 in terms of the manufacturers, our, our only support we need is basically that we get our new products to the market rapidly at a price that is reasonable for the company and also at a price that is reasonable for Australian consumers. Uh, we do operate in a global market, so uh, there is a global price that is expected for a product and it's very difficult for Australia as a, a rich OECD country uh, to claim that we should you know, be able to have a product significantly cheaper than the rest of the world. It's a little bit by, like the iPhone uh, um, watch coming yes. and Australia says, well, we really like the watch, but we're not paying $329 <laughs> for it. We, are, we only want to pay 100 Of course. And of course, you can imagine Apple will say, well, that's very good that you say that, but you're such a tiny market that we probably won't sell the, I, uh, the iPhone watch here. Uh, and so uh, we just got to remember that, that, that it is a globally based industry. And of course, quite rightly, the government must get value for money. But because every product is health economically tested, they know they get value for money on a, on a narrow definition of cost effectiveness. But we don't always take in the full advantages that the, the, the products bring the in terms thing. of the value uh, extension of life, productivity, participation, all these other things that occur. Uh, uh, patients being able to keep working, um, and loved ones not having to care for them, less welfare payments, more tax being paid, all that side, which is not taken into account. For, let me to give you a quick example. If you have a treatment that stops the patient going blind, uh, the, the, the additional impact and the additional savings to the nations are huge, yes. but we're only allowed to look at the narrow cost effectiveness. Which is frustrating from your well, point Well, it of is, view. because we're not looking at the total value that the medicine delivers, and therefore the, potentially the price you, you, you would be willing to pay. Absolutely. In your opinion, Doctor, how do you see the relationship between pharmacists and industry in Australia? I think it's always been a phenomenally constructive relationship. Uh, 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 we discussed earlier today at the session we're all part of a very important ecosystem that really has a huge impact on the health of the nation. Uh, we were discussing earlier uh, heart disease has declined by 78% in Australia. It's now no longer the leading cause of death in Australia and that undoubtedly is due to this industry uh, and, and everybody in it. It's due to, uh, uh, and it continues to be due to, the originator companies that developed it, the generic companies that now have made it more affordable, the pharmacists that make sure the prescriptions are correct and hand them over, and the, and the wholesalers that move the boxes to the right places under the right conditions. So uh, we've always, I think, been a very uh, collaborative and uh, understanding community, even though obviously we've got customer relationships yes. and we've got prices and we've got that side. But I think we all understand what a great role everybody does within this very important uh, um, uh, service for the nation. Absolutely. The final big question, what would industry like to see 
from the sixth community pharmacy agreement. This is your opportunity. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, the, the sixth community pharmacy agreement is primarily, obviously, to do with the the, the, um, 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 the 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 viability and ensuring that pharmacists are appropriately remunerated for the work they do. Yes. So I, I think uh, we've had a huge reform of the PBS, which has impacted the pharmacists uh, um, greatly in terms of what's gone on. The big benefit of the PBS, and, and the ph and pharmacists are used to this as well, first of all, we already have a price signal to patients. We have a copay. It's index linked. We absolutely are certain we, we have value for money of the service we provide because every product doesn't get onto the PBS unless it's health economically tested. Um, uh, and, and, and therefore, we've got a very sustainable PBS that's growing. The last time it grew at 1.7% and probably flatter. But uh, as regards the pharmacy agreement, which is beyond the PBS, the same principles should really apply. Yeah. We should make sure that there is a price signal for patients so they don't inappropriately use services. Uh, there should also be a, a, a situation as well where the government makes sure we get value for money for the services that pharmacists provide. And those services should be provided so that pharmacists can, can make a profitable living out of the delivery of the services. Uh, I think there shouldn't be cross subsidization there should be transparency, and that's, uh, you know, the same principle should be applied. Uh, I think, to a great extent, uh, the PBS leads as a, a figure, but the PBS and the pharmacy uh, agreements are so much more efficient than many other elements of the healthcare service, yes. where a lot more reform is required, and those types of principles of, uh, of uh, you know, paying something for the service and making sure it's cost effective uh, uh, apply. Doctor, you're a busy man. We appreciate your time here on Pharmacy News. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's absolute pleasure. It's always part of my uh, year. I, I feel I'm not having a good year unless I've been to the <laughs> APP in March. Tick it off, you yeah, yeah, Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll be back with more Pharmacy News shortly.